Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the uh, opportunity to be speaking here at Notes. I'm uh, really excited. Uh, there are so many interesting sessions today, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Um, my name is Jonas Nolde. Uh, I'm from the sunny southwest of Germany. I earned my master's degree in computer science and media earlier this year. And now I got the chance to work at BerryBeat on intelligent data systems and automation. Um, in the session, I will present you some of my work. After a quick app demo, I'll talk about when you should fine tune and what you need. Um, and then I, I'll go a bit deeper into the data set and show you some of my code and uh, the fine tuning results. Uh, let me start by explaining our use case. Allowing our data, our customers to explore their Neo4j databases with natural language. Implementing good UI is challenging, especially uh, because our database combines many, many complex domains like welcome management or access management. We also want to be flexible and quickly adapt to changes in the database structure. Um, and lastly, we have different end user groups like receptionists or managers. And uh, we want to understand exactly what, what each group needs to know. Um, so LLMs allow us to manage all of that in one UI. And uh, now let me show you a demo. Um, this is our Graph Explorer UI. Uh, it runs in the browser and you could plug in any Neo4j database you want. Um, it lets our customers ask anything about their data, uh, however they want. For example, show me a graph of of very, very big GmbH. And uh, we see the graph uh, of the company. Um, we can also see the generated cipher query. Um, even though I didn't give it uh, any hint, it correctly figured out that Verybit GmbH is a company name. It also optional matched uh, all relations that are there and gave them uh, individual names if they have the same type. Um, we like that answer, so we can give it a thumbs up. So we can see that BerryBeat has um, a trailer, a vehicle, and uh, four employees. And um, now we could ask a question about an employee, like Farhad Nozari. Um, like, for example, what events did you organize? And here we can see all the event nodes. Um, we can also toggle to the list view. Maybe that's the better visu visualization for that. And um, yeah, we give that a thumbs up too. Now we um, might wonder how many events did you organize? Because we don't want to count. Okay, so this doesn't look right. I expected a number here. Um, this is when our users could give a negative feedback. Um, number expected. And uh, we use that negative feedback to uh, figure out which questions uh, are answered wrong. We can then uh, fix this query and add it to our training data base. So after we fine tune our model again, um, this question will be answered. Okay, um, so the Graph Explorer I showed you um, probably reminds some of you of the Neo4j browser, but there's an important extra step that translates the natural language into a cipher query. So the problem we solved is um, that based on the given Neo4j database and the user input, we need a cipher query that satisfies the, that input. And our solution to this um, was to prompt an autoregressive auto decoder model to generate the query token by token. Um, okay, but how did we fine tune? 
asked, um, why did we fine tune? Fine tuning a model takes a lot of work. Um, we did it because no open source model could solve our task otherwise. Uh, instead, we could could have used uh, an external API to open AI's models, for example. They are very powerful and could do text to cipher translation out of the box. Uh, and also, we don't have to um, have an infrastructure for hosting the model. In our case, the problem was um, that our customers' natural language input, inputs could contain sensible information. And uh, for data privacy and security reasons, we couldn't use external APIs. We have to host uh, an open source model ourselves to keep everything private. Um, another option to fine tuning would be um, to use retrieval augmented few shot prompting. Um, this works by including correct question query pairs into the prompt, uh, which are retrieved from a vector store based on the asked question. However, um, our database is very complex and it's very uh, difficult to teach all the missing information uh, through just a few examples. So uh, we figured out that our best option was fine tuning where we bake the missing knowledge into the model weights through training. Um, what are the, the ingredients you need for fine tuning? Well, you need a pre-trained base model. Um, the capabil capabilities should fit your task. So um, like, did it learn Cypher or um, does it understand German in our case? Um, also, the model should be of appropriate size. It should have enough par parameters for the complexity of the task, but it should also fit on your GPU for training. Um, my tip is to find out what model size you can fine tune on your GPU and then look for open source models on Hugging Face. Uh, we got our, 20, uh, our 13 billion um, code Llama instruct model from Hugging Face as well. And then you need a fine tuning data set. Um, you need high, high quanti quantity and quality of samples. You um, could uh, anonymize sensitive data if needed, or you should if needed. Um, and specifically for fine tuning, only teach what the model doesn't know yet. Um, you should build on top of the base model's knowledge and not retrain it. You also need a GPU um, that can fit the model weights, gradients, uh, the data, and the optimizer. We bought our 25 gigabyte GPU for $2,000. And lastly, you need a training script that does everything from loading the model to training to saving the model at the end. Okay, now um, let's dive into the training data. It's the, the most important part for fine tuning. Um, our data set consists of hundreds of examples like this. And um, the input prompt in black um, is composed of three parts. First, the instruction where we tell the model that it should provide a cipher query for a new J database that answers the given user question. Um, next, we have the context, which in our case is the database schema. Like um, what nouns does it have, what relations, uh, and also the node properties. We also add annotations uh, that are useful to the LLM, like uh, that the modified on property of the event is an integer that um, contains a date time in epoch milliseconds. This is important. Uh, the context is important for the model, so it knows how to query correctly. Uh, and lastly, lastly, we have our uh, user input question. Um, and because we use supervised fine tuning, uh, supervised learning, we must provide the correct cipher query at the bottom. And here are um, two other examples um, for, uh, for questions the model had difficulties with. Um, list events next Thursday. Uh, what does next Thursday mean in cipher? Um, this is a very complex query, and um, our database also has events with uh, that could be multi days could spend multi uh, multiple days so uh, this makes the query even more complex um the second example show me all rooms is very easy for the model to solve but we want it to not only show the rooms but we want it to show a nice graph uh, with uh, the buildings and locations um, so we have a nice hierarchical layout for the graph So um, besides the choice of your base model, the training data set is the biggest lever to achieve good performance, but it also requires the most work. Um, here are some challenges we faced and uh, which you might also face. Um, 
first, which questions are rel uh, relevant to answer? Um, we solve this by storing all questions our users ask and uh, th so that we can analyze and validate them later. Um, second, uh, what kind of questions uh, does the model have problems with? As shown before, we ask our users to give feedback with an up or down vote and downvoted answers will be looked at, corrected and then added to the training data. Um, and also if a, if a um, query ex uh, has ex execution errors, we also know that we have to correct it. Um, what is the correct query to the question? Um, in supervisor learning, you must provide a correct answer. Um, and we use upvoted questions, uh, up upvoted answers, um, so uh, to know which queries are uh, correct and add them to the training data. Um, and also we annotate wrong queries manually, um, but we have a labeling interface for that that makes it easy and fast. The last uh, challenge, which you always have when uh, building the training data sets, is uh, how to incre increase the qu uh, quantity and quality of the training samples. Um, we encourage our users to, to wish and be, be creative with their questions, so we get a lot of diversity. And also we um, remove duplicates from the training data because um, duplicates don't give new information in training. Okay, once you have a good data set, uh, you can fine tune your pre trained model. Um, let's dive into QLora fine tuning and how you can implement it in Python. QLora was introduced earlier this year um, and it combines multiple innovations like low rank adapters, where, where you freeze the pre trained model and only train um, adapter weights that are stuck into the model. The adapter is very small compared to the whole model. Um, it uses four bit quantization. Um, and uh, it uses a paged, paged optimizer that manages memory spikes. The code we used is adapted from the official QLora repository. Um, if you want to see the full code, you can look it up there. Um, but I'll show you the most important parts of it now. Um, in line four, we set up the model and also um, do the quantization. If you use the double quantization and the four bit normal float, you uh, get the best performance for the lowest memory footprint. And uh, here in line 17, we um, we set up the LoRa adapter um, where we define our target modules. These are the layers where the adapter weights are stuck on into. Uh, we can set the rank, uh, which is um, basically the size of the model uh, of the adapter weights and also the LoRa alpha scaling factor, which is uh, which which influences um, how much the adapter plays into the uh, the result. And in line 28, we set the paged Adam W optimizer. And uh, finally, we can tie everything together with the sequence to sequence trainer uh, and start the training. OK, so um, to finish, we can, I can show you some of our training uh, results. Uh, the different lines here stand for stand for different fine tuning runs with different hyperparameters. Um, each run took only about thirty minutes, um, and you can see how the cross entropy loss between the correct and predicted tokens decreased over the course of the training. Um, on the left, you can see the training loss for the training samples the model optimized for. So it is, it is expected to go down. On the right, you see the evaluation loss for unknown, unseen training, training samples. This gives you the best hint about which model is, uh, is the best. In our case, the blue line, the blue model at step 60 was the best performing model. And uh, you also saw the model in the demo earlier. Um, but once we get more data, more training data, we can uh, fine tune even better models. And uh, so in the future, these will improve. And um, with all that said, thank you so much for listening. I hope it was interesting and you learned something new. And um, I'm very happy to take your questions and answer them. Thank you.